So the first website to consider is Radiopedia.com. And as the name of the website suggests, this is essentially a radiology encyclopedia. Now this website gets referenced by me and most of my colleagues multiple times a day. This has in-depth explanations of various different pathologies, exactly how they would look, their epidemiology, facts about it, how it would look on different imaging modalities. It really is a fantastic resource and one of the most famous radiology free resources. Now, the other thing that's unique about Radiopedia is that it also offers courses. During COVID-19, they recorded a lot of lectures, which is good for trainees, and they have fantastic courses. Now, these courses are not free. However, the content that they have is so immense, and it's such a great free resource that these courses are just a cherry on top. Just as an example here, we'll just search in Radiopedia, endometrioma. And then you'll see, it comes up just like uh, Wikipedia. You take a look at this article. This is an article on endometrioma. Here's the epidemiology, pathology, common locations, radiographic features, starting with all different types of modalities. So it tells you what it would look like on plain radiograph, ultrasound, different characteristics of it on MRI. And it also includes these cases and figures on the side, which give you examples of exactly what an endometrioma would look like in various different situations. So it's an excellent resource to have. It's something that should be often times referenced whenever our attendings mention something you're not familiar with. Definitely should be referenced. Read about it here. It provides a nice snapshot. It's not overwhelming to read and it's very helpful. So Radiopedia, definitely highly recommended. The next free resource to really consider is radiologyassistant.com. Now this website, very similar to Radiopedia, a big vast library of radiology knowledge. However, this one is a little bit more detailed and a little bit more specified for day-to-day -day clinical practice. So Radiopedia is more generic and broad. This one has real life clinical scenarios and exactly how to go about reporting them, dictating them, as well as what to do with them. For example, in this website, you'll be able to go into like the pediatric section and take a look at exactly what are considered normal sizes of, let's say, various organs, such as the liver and the kidneys, in children, adults, etc. So it kind of helps you on a more practical basis, on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, fantastic presentation as well as a lot of very useful information. So this website gets referenced often by me and again, most of my colleagues. And as you can see, very broad, you hit abdomen and very detailed about appendicitis, uh, aneurysm rupture, gallbladder obstruction, characterization of liver masses. Let's just look at that for example. Then it's very detailed and lets you know with pictures, diagrams, images, exactly how liver lesions will look in different phases, arterial phase, portal venous phase. It'll talk about what to do with incidental findings and what to do next with various different lesions, various different pathologies. So in terms of just learning radiology and helping you on a day-to-day -day while you're dictating and going through the cases, going through the list every single day, radiology assistant is something definitely that you should not be overlooking. It helps a lot helps with a lot of the questions that the attendings are going to ask you, so definitely check it out. Another really fantastic resource is headneckbrainspine.com. Now this is a really unique resource as well. In order to be a good radiologist, it goes without saying, you have to be an expert in anatomy. Well, above that, I argue that in the field of neuroradiology, anatomy is even more crucial. If you understand the anatomy, it's going to help you narrow down the differential diagnosis because certain pathologies like to be in certain anatomic locations. And in general, neuroradiology, the anatomy gets very, very complex. And you have to be able to master it the way it looks in CT, the way it looks on MRI. And this website here 
is fantastic when it comes to understanding the anatomy. This goes through brain MRI, skull-based CT, sinuses, orbit, neck, which can be, all of these can be very, very confusing when you're on call and when you're just on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a fantastic free resource, again, where you're able to get a general idea and learn the anatomy. So here I'll just give a little bit of an example of how it is. Right here, where, as you take a look, we have sections of the brain, and as you hover your mouse over them, it gives you exactly, lets you know the anatomy for all different parts. Here, looking at like midbrain, pons, medulla, down here to the cisterna magna. And then what's really cool is that you can scroll through in real time. And as you scroll through, you can move your mouse over and get an idea of the anatomy exactly. And this is just an example of an MRI of the brain. You can do this with CTs of sinuses, CT of the brain, CT of the neck, CT of the spine. So this is a very good anatomy resource, and again, completely free. So this is more, one that's very much worth checking out, headneckbrainspine.com. Now last, but certainly not least, I have to go over one website which is able to provide some didactics instead of all the other resources that I gave so far that are more encyclopedia-based and knowledge-based. So this is from the Society of Skeletal Radiology. This is the M Musculoskeletal Imaging Core Courses. These are free sets of videos that go over a basic curriculum in musculoskeletal radiology. In many programs, exposure to musculoskeletal radiology is made difficult, mainly because a lot of the imaging that you need to be good at is done on an outpatient, non-emergent basis. I'm talking about MRIs of knees, shoulders, arthrograms, things of those nature. So this gives you a nice overview of a full curriculum of musculoskeletal radiology. The videos are short, they range in length, how you know most of them are like around 15, 20 minutes each, and goes through all types of topics like trauma, infection, tumors, arthritis, and overall it's a very good overview of musculoskeletal radiology and definitely something I recommend and again it's a free resource available to all radiology residents. Now all the resources that I mentioned here in this video will be linked in the in the comment section down below or in the information box above the comment section down below. Let me know what you think, let me know your thoughts. If you like the content don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time.